you're not good enough at ultrasound, that's not an excuse to punish your patients with radiation. Get out there, ultrasound some hearts, some lungs, some IVCs, let us know how you feel about it. Yeah, we can definitely do that, or we could be better clinicians and use our ultrasound. Linear ultrasound in pregnancy. Are you crazy? Well, maybe, but not because of this idea. This works. So just calm down, listen up, and try this. This episode is actually from the website and podcast, 5 Minutes Sono. And you've probably noticed recently that Jacob Avila, creator of 5 Minutes Sono, has been on a lot of podcasts. And that's because, well, he's awesome. right? And he's now officially a part of the podcast. Got a new logo, new intro, and Jacob will be here dropping knowledge bombs on you every month. And he's going to be at all of our conferences from now on as well. Speaking of which, castlefest2017.com is open for registrations. And if you wanted to go to Cabo and you went to the site and you noticed recently that it was sold out, well, you're in luck. We were able to make a few extra spots and the registration for Cabo Fest 2017 is back up and available. Spots are available for the resuscitation course, the teaching course with Rob Rogers, and a few more now available for the ultrasound course also. Don't blow it and miss out again. You don't give many second chances in life. Now, enjoy this 5-Minute Sono Ultrasound Podcast collaboration on a pregnancy ultrasound quick tip. Hey, this is Jacob Avila of 5 Minutes Sono, and today I have a special guest to talk to us about first trimester bleeders and how you can evaluate their uterus. Matt Dawson here from ultrasoundpodcast.com. Jacob, excited to be on 5 Minutes Sono. Excellent. Excited to have you. So I want to tell you about a case. Let's do a quick case, all right? You have a 29-year-old female. She's G1, P0. She's in her fifth week of pregnancy. She comes in with a little bit of vaginal bleeding and a little bit of abdominal pain. What is your typical steps? What do you normally do? Let's take a look, see if she's got an intrauterine pregnancy, okay. which will then rule out ectopic for us, and we're much less worried at that point. Right, exactly. Now, typically, we start with a curvilinear transducer, and what do you see here with this curvilinear transducer? Looks like you get a sagittal orientation. You have the bladder on the right, you have the uterus on the left, and it looks like there's clearly a gestational sac in there. You can kind of make out the double decidual sign, so it does look like probably a real gestational sac. I don't see a yolk sac though, which is a problem because that's normally what we use as the first definitive sign of intrauterine pregnancy. I really want to see that yolk sac. I got you. That makes sense. And I agree this gestational sac could be in an early pregnancy or the patient could actually have an ectopic and that's what you worry about in anybody with symptoms like our patient has. We can get another view. Do you think another view would help? Again, you can see the gestational sac. I can almost imagine something in there, but I really can't say definitively that I see a yolk sac yet. Right. Typically what we do at this point is order that endocavitary ultrasound, right, from the radiology department, or we do it ourselves. And let's say you're in this situation and the endocavitary probe is being used currently. They're doing a uh, peritonsillar abscess, so you can't use that one. And you call the radiology department, and they're not going to be able to even do the ultrasound for another three hours because they're really backed up with stuff. What other options do you have? I mean, should we just send this person home? Well, there's actually a few things you can do, Jacob. Um, and it's what I would do instead of going straight to endocavitary on this patient first anyway. Number one, I'd decrease that depth to get a better view of sure, the curvilinear. Sure. I'd also, if I could, increase my frequency on the curvilinear. Sometimes that's enough to help me see the yolk sac. If I can't do that, the reason you want an endocavitary ultrasound is because two things. Number one, you get closer to this gestational sac. And number two, it's a high frequency, so you get a better resolution. We can accomplish both of those things by switching to a linear probe. Wow. And then zooming in and also pressing down the abdomen to get a couple centimeters closer. So this next image is that same exact patient using a linear transducer. What do you see here? I see a yolk sac. So what I could kind of imagine before, I can clearly see now there is a yolk sac. This is a definitive intrauterine pregnancy. I like it. And right about here, you can almost make out a small embryo right there as well. And with this particular patient, I could visually see a heartbeat flutter, although I couldn't pick it up with M mode. So for me, this was enough to be able to send that patient home for follow-up and call it a threatened abortion just because she had the bleeding and the abdominal pain. But the fetus appeared to be well, it had a heartbeat that didn't seem excessive to me and had a yolk sac. And my suspicion of the patient having a topic was exceedingly low at this point. 
So what would you do in this case if you didn't see a heartbeat, though? You mentioned seeing a heartbeat. I don't think it would change exactly what I did as far as discharging the patient, but I would make sure that the patient got a follow-up ultrasound within one to two days. Yeah, I agree. This could be an inevitable abortion if there's a fetus with no heart rate, but this looks like it's probably just too early to have a heartbeat, so sure. you don't know. Got to get the follow-up. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Now, we do this. This is a common thing we do, but is there any actual evidence for this? Has anyone studied this linear probe in kind of a skinny patient? Yeah, there was one study that I found that actually asked this question. And what they did is they had 81 patients that were first trimester, either abdominal pain and or vaginal bleeding. And first, they looked at them with a curvilinear transducer. And they found that with the curvilinear transducer, with 54 of these 81 patients, they were able to visualize the IUP with the curvilinear transducer. There was 27 of them that they could not visualize a definitive IUP with that curvilinear transducer. Like our case. Like our case. So what happened in those 27 patients? So out of those 27 patients, they all got an examination with that linear transducer. And out of those 27, nine, they were able to see an IUP with a linear transducer. So one third of the patients that you couldn't see anything with a curvilinear, they actually were able to identify that intrauterine pregnancy with the linear transducer. That's a big number, 33%. I remember the very first time I did this scan, I hadn't really thought to do it, but I had a skinny patient and it was so close to the abdomen, I thought maybe I could see it. And when I saw this entry in pregnancy, I thought, wow, how many transvaginal chunks could I have avoided in the past? And how much time could have I saved by doing this? And knowing that a third of these, you may actually see something on, you should probably look pretty much about every time with a linear probe. It just takes a few extra seconds. You may save the patient quite a bit of time and the yeah. hassle of an endocapitary probe. Now, out of those 18 that ended up getting the transvaginal scan, meaning they couldn't find it with a linear transducer, 15 of those actually had no IUP identified. So really the linear transducer only missed three that the transvaginal was able to pick up. So the next time that you're having issues identifying that IUP with the curvilinear transducer, give the linear transducer a shot. You might be surprised. That's it for this week's 5 Minute Sono. Please feel free to email me or send me a tweet. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Go to blog5 slash subscribe. Put your name and your email address in the little text box and never miss another video. And if you don't want to look at it through a web browser, you can always go to your favorite podcasting site, either iTunes or whatever you use for Android, and subscribe there. Ultronpodcast.com. <laughs> they know that I need the right electricity to move my disco feet. They know that I need a rhythm of ecstasy to get the disco feel. Baby, give me the song that keeps rolling on along until the break of dawn. Baby, give me the one, cause we like to get it done before tomorrow comes. Let us know how you feel about it. Yeah, we can definitely do that, or we could be better clinicians and use our ultrasound. <laughs>